Hey, welcome back to Variety Homestead. So, we're going to do a quick midsummer garden tour. Uh, you can check out our spring garden planting. A couple of videos on that. First thing, here's the, the greenhouse. And you can see that it's in a whole lot better shape than it was before. My wife got out here and totally reorganized it, as is normal. Uh, first thing I want to show you, though is a, a hornworm. I don't know if you can see them, but look at that. They get on there and they put eggs and babies on their back and they absolutely destroy your tomato plants. So they got to they got to come off and they got to go away. Debbie's found a, found a hornworm uh, at least one every day for the past few days you can see the damage they can do look look what they did to this plant they'll absolutely shred them now these are those german tomatoes i told you about in the previous video and i'll link to the previous video in this video but here's the tomatoes we've already pulled a bunch off and uh these german tomatoes there we only planted uh a few because we're might can some of them but they have really, uh, there's some great taste in tomatoes. And then you get over here, and you're looking at our okra on the sign. And the okra's not doing much. It's not doing much at all. It should be, I don't know, five or six feet tall by now. And you come over here to this row, and here's our pepper row, uh, one of the pepper rows. So you see uh, banana peppers here. We got jalapenos, um, and others. I mean, look at that okra. <laughs> look at that ridiculous okra. And we got flowers, but the plants are really squatty. It's different from anything we've ever planted. Um, green peppers, etc. Coming over here, we did a video on this, planting asparagus. So here's our asparagus bin. This is a four by eight bin. Uh, we need to do a little weeding here, but you can definitely tell where the asparagus are. And the cool thing about the asparagus is you don't ever have to plant them again. And I don't want to show you the other bin because it's got garlic in it, but the grass is completely taken over. And that's the plan is to get out here and weed that today. Check out the corn, though. The corn is, there are some stalks that are with the little tip on them. That one right there is over eight feet tall. A lot of it, most of it's over six feet tall. Over here, you see that it's not quite that tall um, but we are starting to get corn to come into play so my guess is we probably have i don't know um, this is uh, now mid-july and so i think we probably got another four weeks or so and you can see these one of the banes of our existence has been Look at those bad boys. And we have traps out here. I'll show you the traps. These traps, they work. Now they work like a champ. But there were thousands and thousands. Here's the Japanese beetle traps we use. And there is a ton of Japanese beetles in that particular trap. But you can look and see the corn rows here. Planted those farther apart this year because... We couldn't get down last year to even hardly get the corn, but we were able to do it. The other thing uh, is we got lima beans here, and you can see on the leaves what the Japanese beetles have done to those things. Now they're still growing, and there are lima beans on there. They're starting to pop up, but um, we, there's, a, there's another Japanese beetle trap. There's another Japanese beetle trap. And we've been catching them like crazy, but they just came in the thousands this year. This one's starting to climb up, as you can see. The lima beans are slower, uh, but this lima bean here 
is is really starting to climb up the trellis and get over and you can see them down here and then this back trellis is uh green beans now while we do have sufficient green beans canned to last us at least another year uh we still want to get and get into some more uh we'll probably can as much as we can but there's no we don't have any pressure and you can see some there's a couple of there's some japanese beetles there look at them look at them all up there oh my word though i'm not sure you can see them like i can but they are they are all over these green and they they will absolutely shred those those leaves as you can as you can tell um and there's a trap from where i'm standing not 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 even 10 feet away and this what uh my wife did uh last week or week before was in addition to the traps of which we have four she also sprayed some um seven dust but it's not effective now. It was a it was a seven dust spray kind of thing, and it really worked. The problem is when it rained yesterday, and we probably got a couple inches of rain yesterday. That was that's all gone. Look at these Japanese beetles. Look at that. Look at that. There's dozens of them up here. It's not as many as it used to be, but there are dozens. Uh, but this is the green beans, and they hit them hard last year too. But the traps really took care of them. And they were a little bit earlier last year than they are this year. So that's um, that's disheartening, but I don't think it's gonna kill everything off. Okay, on this side of the garden, so here's our carrots in this front row right here. You can see they look like they're doing really, really well. Uh, then in this next row here, you got parsnips. Now the parsnips aren't doing as well. I don't know, maybe they don't grow as well around here, but they are growing. Uh, and they look different from the carrots. We thought they were going to look really, really similar, but they didn't. So you can see uh, the parsnips are growing, but not going to get nowhere near the harvest with them that we did. And our onions are just about taken over by weeds. we got to get out here and do that. But it's not affecting them uh, as, as, as badly. Um, they're still growing. We're just going to have to take all these, these weird leaf weeds we have we fight that we fight them every year and they're very uh, invasive and they're very prolific and you can't it's hard to pull them up out of the ground but we will get we will get that done and then probably the big story of the day is we only planted three squash plants this year because um last year we planted like six and we got so many squash that uh it was <laughs> it was insane we canned squash we dried squash we froze squash and we ate squash but we planted three three plants the other two got absolutely destroyed and here's the only one that's left now there's a squash on there now but as you can see i'm not at all confident that we're gonna be able to save this one either and i don't know why we don't know what's getting them um, there are some little teeny mite, mite bugs on them, but I think we've dealt with that every year and it hasn't been a huge deal, but at any rate, it doesn't look like we're going to get squash like we want to. The other thing I want to show you is our blackberries. So Debbie got blackberries. She got, we had three and then somebody she ran up on Facebook with gave her five plants or five cut down blackberry bushes because she had so many, five or six. And so we got a special place right outside of the fence of the garden to plant those. And we planted them and those bad boys are really, 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 really doing well. You can see the blackberries through here, I hope. It's really, uh, she, she made a blackberry cobbler a couple nights ago and it was delicious. And you can see some of these things are really starting to pop. And we're still getting some serious blackberries. Uh, this one here, we're not getting a whole lot yet. Uh, but there's some down there in the corner. So uh, blackberries are something that we like. And we want to keep 
uh, keep cultivating uh, this this thing too. So the last thing I want to show you is the elderberry bushes. We just we planted these last year, and they started uh, popping up. It was really weird with these elderberries. When you when we got them, they were just sticks. They came wrapped up, and they were just sticks. And we stuck them in the ground, and look at this. And they're really they're really doing something. So you can't eat them raw, but you can make syrup uh, with them, which we have done, and it is outstanding. Um, but you can see how prolific they are and how well they're doing as well. We did have some Japanese beetle attack, beetles attack these too, but they didn't do any real major damage. But hopefully we'll be getting some elderberries here before too much longer. Hey, thanks for taking this tour with me. Uh, we're proud of all the work. It's so hot and humid that um, it's hard to uh, hard to work out here for very long, especially at our age. But it is uh, very rewarding, and we get a lot of good stuff. Before I go, there's a Japanese beetle trap there. And as you can see, that thing is full too. Or it's not full, but it's got a whole lot of Japanese beetles in it. At any rate, thanks for watching. If you like it, hit like and subscribe. And we will catch you on the next round at Variety Homestead.